Hi friend, today let's talk about readers. Let's talk about those kiddos that we're trying to just pour into and give a love for reading and give them the skill to make it an easy and fluent thing. And then let's also talk about the readers, the books themselves that we use, the resources that are available to use to help build the skill in our kids. Welcome to Born for Homeschool. My name is Rachel Bourne and I have four kiddos ages three through 11 and this year I'm homeschooling the oldest three of our kids. So I have a first grader, a third grader and a sixth grader. And I am in the thick of reading this year. So my third grader is not a fluent reader. Um, she has, it's been more of a struggle. She's had to work a lot harder at reading than um, my oldest daughter or my oldest son. And so she, we are really working at um, giving her resources and tools and helping her as a struggling reader. Also, my first grader is just finishing up Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. So he's finishing up the foundation work for reading. And now that we're here, it's time to move on to the next thing, the next stage. And today I'm going to share with you the resources and the books that we're using for him and for her, my struggling reader and then my beginning reader. So today I'm going to share with you about the readers that we use, what books we use to read, where I get those books, and I'm going to also share with you about motivating and celebrating reading here in our homeschool. And then I also want to share with you about the resources we use for reading in our homeschool. So let's dive in. First of all, I've had several questions about what readers we use in our homeschool. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. We use whatever book the child wants to read. I think my oldest daughter, the very first book that she read from start to finish all on her own was Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. It was not even a book we owned. It was a book that we had gotten from the library. So any book that catches their interest, that draws them in, and that they can connect this, oh, I can do this. I have the skills um, and I have the desire to read this book. So I like to have a variety of books here in our homeschool library. Uh, beginning readers and um, just things that will be uh, so simple and easy, things that they like to just flip through on their own and read by themselves, or things that are more challenging, um, things that take encouragement and someone sitting next to them. So I like to have a wide variety. But some of the books that we have here in our homeschool library are these Bob books. So we have lots and lots of just simple short stories that they can flip through and read pretty much on their own. And there's all sorts, this one's upside down, a lot of them are upside down. There's all sorts of um, just cute, interesting stories. And if there's some that spark, um, spark their interest, they're able to just pick them up and read them, read through them. So I keep a lot of these handy. And then also I have, I was given these really old um, phonics practice readers and I was given these years ago and my kids have loved these stories. So, you know, Jim wins, Tim, just really fun, fun with gum. These are such fun, like easy, simple stories, but the, the stories are really entertaining and engaging. So looking for these would be a good idea. And then also we just have just little readers, easy, simple, stories with fun pictures, one or two, three words on the page. These are always fun. I keep things like this in a handy little drawer that um, my kids can go and raid whenever they want to. So we also have uh, picture books that, um, these would be books that we've read to the kids, but yet they're also really simple, easy readers, you know, two, words per page and yet they um you know four words for both pages but they're they're actual stories and so and they're familiar and so this is a really easy way for the kids to pick up this book and to start reading so where to find readers my number one suggestion for looking for books for reading for your kids would be the library every library that i've ever been in has an easy reader section 
And so most of the books are really thin. So you might just wanna pay attention to the top right hand corner of the first page and that will tell you the level of reading um, for that book. And you can use that to help you select readers for your child at the library. Now, a couple of things to note. I like to get some books that may be a little bit easier for my child to read, but then I also for sure get the ones that are at their level that will challenge them that are engaging stories, things that they would want to read. So that would be, my number one suggestion would be to look at your library. We also have a church library. My kids go and get books and then return books every single week. And so that has been an excellent resource for readers for my kids. And then I've also mentioned that I got several of these from another homeschool mom whose kids were out of the reader's stage of books. And so she just gave them to me. And so make sure if you have some friends that you know, um, maybe their kids are you know, past the beginning reader stage, um, and maybe she's looking to get rid of some readers, be sure to ask, or you could put an ISO in search of ad on your Facebook marketplace, and you might be able to find some books that someone just needs to find a good home for. So also we do readers sometimes as gifts. So not this last Christmas as in, you know, a month ago, but in my, my uh, second daughter, her second grade year, she was really into biscuit books. And so for Christmas, she got this biscuit storybook favorites. And we actually have several different, you know, storybook treasury books of um, different stories that our kids have been interested in, um, especially in this critical time of just beginning to engage in stories and just beginning to read. Um, sometimes it's really hard for them to have a desire to want to do the work of reading um, just to get the story. And so having stories that they're invested in that they really want to hear um, or want to know, want to read is really important. So we got this uh, Biscuit Storybook Favorites and it's 10 stories in here um, of the Biscuit stories. And so, you know, pretty beautiful and simple um, stories that were a great choice for our beginner reader. So not only libraries and friends and the internet, but also you could look for at secondhand stores. Um, there's been lots and lots of our readers and our even just our chapter books that I found at our local Goodwill. So definitely check out a thrift store near you. So one of the, the readers that we have here in our homeschool is I have the reading curriculum and this is done by um, Bob Jones University. And we don't go through this as a reading curriculum. I just use these readers. This has been such a great resource for our homeschool. There are all sorts of stories and I mean, you have everything from a poem to um, a drama, a script for a play, and you have Bible stories and just um, snippets of stories, um, Aesop's fables, all sorts of things here in these readers. And they're all at a specific level. I love to have these available for my kids also as they're learning to read. So next let's talk about motivation and celebration. My oldest daughter required absolutely zero motivation for reading. In fact, there are lots of times when I have to tell her she may not read anymore. I know it's shocking a homeschool mother has to tell her child, stop reading, but I have, even from second grade, I mean, when she was six years old, she was reading books like the Chronicles of Narnia and things like that. So she has been a voracious reader ever since she has learned to read. But it's not been the case for my second daughter. She, reading has been more of a challenge and a lot more work for her. And so the motivation is just not there. So if you watched my video at the beginning of this school year, I shared with you what we were doing for our curriculum for this year, and I'll put a link if you're interested in that video. But I shared with you that I was going to do this reading challenge um, chart for my third grader. So simply coloring in the books as she's read them has been motivation enough for her to be reading. However, I kind of upped the ante a few weeks ago. I told her once she finished this sheet of reading 100 books that I would give her a prize. 
And so that for sure gave her extra motivation for continuing to <laughs> plow through as many books as possible. And you guys, I want to be honest, um, somewhere between like 15 and I think we're at like 41 now, um, she has just taken off. Reading is, it's definitely still work and it's not something that um, she likes to do yet, but she's becoming better and better and better at it. And as she's continuing to just go through these books and read and practice, um, it has been so good for her. And so this has been a really good motivation. And then she doesn't know, but the prize that I got for her is this journal that has a silicone, uh, it's a, a notebook. Um, it's got a silicone like cover on it and like all the different letters and stuff. I just picked this up from Walmart. She's going to absolutely love it. She hasn't seen it. She doesn't know what the price is yet, but I'm so excited for her to finish her sheet and to be able to get this prize. Um, and then we will uh, start another sheet that I would, I'm hoping that she has done 200 books by the end of the summer to start this coming school year. And so helping to motivate her with um, a progress sheet that she can see and feel really proud about, and then also with a prize that she can anticipate is really helping her to be motivated to want to read more. So for readers, I let my readers read any book they want. I just try to have a variety and spread a feast and have them available um, new books from libraries and things like that, and then giving them motivation with charts and prizes if that's needed. But then also, I am planning to continue on with our reading curriculum. I use Explode the Code. My third grader has finished the books that she had so far this year, and so I need to buy the next round for her to continue in Explode the Code. And now that my first grader has finished the foundation work of learning to read, um, we are planning to start Explore the Code um, in book one for him. And so that will be where he goes in his reading after Teach Your Child to Read in 100 e Easy Lessons. And I'm also planning to print out a, a reading challenge for him. Instead of doing a, a number of books reading challenge, I'm planning to do a calendar and just um, have him put a sticker every day that he reads and so and do it um, in that way, which would be a little bit different from my third grader. So that's how we do reading here in our homeschool for the early years, beginning reading. And I would love to hear what ideas you have for your beginning reader. What, what things have you found to motivate them, to celebrate the as they, become more and more skilled at reading? And um, how do you how, how do you impart this love of reading? I just, in my oldest daughter, it was just such a fluid and easy thing. That has been so good for me as a teacher and as a mom, just recognizing the differences and um, not comparing, but just celebrating them as the person they are and still adjusting to find the things that work for them. So I'd love to hear from you what things you have found that work with your children. So I hope you found this to be helpful and to give you lots of ideas and inspiration as you work on reading with your child. And I'm so grateful you're here today. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again in next week's video.